Master Sword Music. TJ the Gamer. Yeah, that's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round, yeah, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round, yeah, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round, ooh, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round, ooh, we. Yeah, that's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus got one of the best cast that you have ever seen you really miss it out if you haven't heard that this show here to stay so go past the word old school or new school check us out on youtube it don't matter what you like we got something for you just one more thing to say before i start to close shout out to my homies at the corner yeah, show the yeah. corner show games music movie tv we got what you need plus the gamers round yeah we that's the corner show games music movie tv we got what you need Round E, E, that's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. That's the gamers round E, E, that's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. That's the gamers round E. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Hello. All right, all right, let's get started on. Welcome to the Chrono Show uh, featuring Jay Jackhammer. What's up, guys? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to have you here. So I'm really excited to ask you some questions based on, let's say, your martial arts experience or, you know, your school and going to uh, Mortal Kombat Legend Never Dies. Uh, did I say it right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so let's go on with the first question. And um, uh, let's see. Tell me about your martial arts background. Martial arts background. Woo! Okay. It's Take, not, your time. Take your time. It's not really extensive, but uh, anyway, so I started training when I was five years old. Um, um, in my family, every male in my family did martial arts. So uh, my older brothers, my cousins did karate, um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do Chinese martial arts. Um, I am a disciple of the Shaolin Temple, and so basically what that means is that so in the Shifu and the student kind of relationship um, I am I took kind of like a vow like my teacher brought me into his family so. Okay, so it's something that uh, you've been doing for uh, how many years? Uh? So this is my 35th year. Wow well, 35th this, year. well, you were really young. You yeah, were, you were like five years old started when I was five. Yes. yes awesome. Yes. Awesome. So um, looks like um, Drunken Fist is a big, um, I saw you do that for the first time at the Midwest Gaming Classic in November and I was really impressed. I did a video for you and, uh, when I met some of the other guys too. But um, um, Drunken Fist, where does that, um, what did you, did you begin it around 35 years ago or something? No, actually, it's really funny about the Drunken Fist thing. So yes, Drunken Fist is a style that I do. Kids don't drink, um, but um, it's a... I actually started doing it about maybe 15 years ago. It's kind of funny. So my uh, my teacher, I would train in America and train in China. Um, my teacher is in China, so I went to martial arts schools here in America. But then I would go to China in the summers. <clears throat> and um, when I was older, he was always like, "Hey, what happened to you? You've gotten fat." <laughs> and, and I'm like, um, "It's a." Um, American life, but I mean, like I was, I was muscular. I lifted weights um, in high school. I played football, and we. So I just, I mean, like, so I wasn't like just blah. I was just, I was muscular and I was big. But they would call it, they would always call it um, fat muscle. Call it fat muscle. And so I think my teacher would always think that I wasn't doing anything when I was in America. So he'd be like, "What happened? You've gotten fat. Go run." And then and just make me go run. Like I couldn't ask him for how long. I just had to keep running until he finally saw me and decided he wanted me to come back in to work out. And one year I was leaving, like I said, about 14, 15 years ago. I'm about to go back to America. And he's like, here, I want to give you this. And uh, my teacher is Shida Chung. He's a 31st generation Shaolin monk, Shaolin warrior at the Shaolin Temple. And he gave me this DVD of him doing like 
basic techniques and uh, different drills that he wanted me to work on. Of Drunken Fist? Or? Um, it actually had Drunken Fist at the end, so okay. it had these basics. It had, he gave me a couple of them, and he's like, yeah, so a student had me make these, and I want to give this to you. And I was like, man. I didn't say this to him, but I'm like, he really thinks I don't work out when I'm in America. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so disheartened. So um, I was watching the video, because I was like, oh, I'm going to show it to him when I go back, show him. And it, Drunken Fist was on it. And I'm like, no way! This is Gotta so good. Cool. Yes. So from then on, I started doing uh, Drunken Fist. All right, so let's continue back into Drunken Fist. Um, do you necessarily have to have, well, I mean, I've seen it in movies like Jack Chan movies where he's supposedly drinking liquor, or oh, he drank liquor when he was doing the movie, but did you put any, you, you put, don't put liquor in it. I don't know. Did I? Did you see? I'm just trying to figure it out. What is that? Let me see. So the thing is, with Drunken Fist, it's true. You do actually drink. Now, the reason for it is that there are two really well-known uh, masters that did Drunken Fist uh, in Chinese culture. One was Wu Song, and the other was Lu Zhishen. So Lu Zhishen is particular because he's kind of what made Drunken Fist kind of like well-known for being a style to fight with. And the story is, he was, they called him the Hua He Shang, which means like the fake monk, like the flamboyant monk. And he, why? Because he, he drank, he was actually a bounty hunter. And so, one, like an outlaw. And he, there's a story that he was trying to get this bounty on this butcher. Now, back then, it's like butchers were big because they had like a boar butcher. And, um, and he was afraid that like the guy would just like dismantle him. So he just started drinking, just kind of and so the key thing about Drunken Fist, why we drink, is that it um it let lets you let go of your inhibitions. Yes. Okay. And so yeah, and it made you gave you kind of like some people would say liquid courage. Yes. And so that that's liquid one of the courage. key points of Drunken Fist. I thought I remember they watching it in the movie. I don't know if they exaggerated in the movie. I think, uh, I think it was Jackie Chan who said Liquid Courage or something like that. One of his. I don't know if they said Liquid Courage. They may have. But yes, that's basically what it is. It's like, I mean, people that have drunk before, remember kids, don't drink. Um, it's that they, you, you kind of feel like you can do whatever you want. I mean, people have seen YouTube videos of people being drunk and fighting. But the thing is, is that you control the drinking. So you start off by drinking a little bit and so you build up a tolerance. Also you don't seem as threatening when if you smell like alcohol people will maybe drop their guard. Oh, so like, like, like I said since I do movies and stuff as well um, where you, I'm used to doing things over and over again because oh something didn't work out really well. I was actually filming a, a trailer for a, a short film that we were working on and like we did all the filming. It was like it was out of town, so it was like a three-hour drive to the location. location. We had like literally like twelve hours of film, shooting everything, and got wow, home. Twelve hours. Put it on the computer, and all of the volume was distorted. Oh, so couldn't use any of it. Whole day completely lost. So, so you got to re reshoot. Yes. Yes, completely. Um, oh, Let's get into something also I'm very interested in. Um, when you told me, this is a, we're in your school, and it's called um, Jade Fortress. Yes. Can you tell me about Jade Fortress and how it became to be? Okay. So, like I said, I've been training since I was five years old. And Jade Fortress came to be because uh, originally the school's name was Huang Lin Bao Jian. Okay. Huang Lin Bao Jian just means precious sword. Uh, my martial arts family name is Huang my best friend at the time when we opened up the school, his family name was Lin. So we just said Precious Sword, Huang and Lin, Precious Sword, right? So, and um, I started it probably when I was about, what, it was 2003. So next year will be on my 20th anniversary. Wow, wow. Yeah. And we, it's just we wanted, we wanted to teach martial arts. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I was also an ex-tournament uh, fighter used to compete all the time and at that time I was still competing actually and I just wanted to kind of bring it to life and give it to the people that didn't have the chance to go to China but um, in 2013 I made a decision to move to China full-time so I would stay there instead of just the summers I stayed 
all the way until so it was basically I, half of the year in 2012 and then I was completely there like 2013 I'd come back and visit America but um, and then in 2016 I moved back okay to America and do you miss China you know I do I do like I usually go back um, for the summers after I've moved back but having a wife and kids now it's you, do you, you don't go back with them or just your own um, so we wanted to, but uh, COVID kind of messed that up. So COVID's always yes, yes, yes. Plain. But Jade Fortress, uh, I changed the name to Jade Fortress because I like that. Originally, I was under. I just trained with my Shurfu, and uh, but living there for the whole time, like I ended up training in the villages around the temple, and I met up with other martial artists that did different family styles of Shaolin. And I just realized that, so, Jade, or Yu Jai, um, the name of the Shaolin Temple, like, in the old scriptures was Yu Jai Shan. So it was like the Fortress Temple, Jade Fortress Mountain. So um, I, that's why I changed the school's name, because I didn't only teach the Shaolin lineage of, that was in the temple, but also from the villages around. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for that. See, um, how, tell me about how do you feel about the teacher and student relationship? Teacher and student relationship. Oh, so that's kind of like that's like there's so many different parts to it. Basically, it, it depends on uh, what lineage you have. Like, are you doing a Chinese martial art? Or are you doing a Japanese martial art? And what your relationship is with that teacher. So there's two types in Chinese martial arts. They'll say shifu. So shifu, even though it sounds the same, there are two different words. One is shi, like teacher, and which comes from the word lao shi, and then the other fu comes for fu qin, which is father. So you're teaching father, and then the other just means kind of a master. So in Chinese martial arts or in Chinese culture, you can call anyone a shifu. I would call you a shifu. I'm like, hey, call no shifu because you are a filmographer. Right? Okay. And you can be a taxi driver. I'm like, hey, Shurfu, this. So it's just kind of like saying Mr. How do you pronounce it? Shurfu? Shurfu. Shurfu. Mm -hmm. So like her adding an S and then like the Foo Fighters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shurfu. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then the word in Chinese culture is that so like you wouldn't even call, like if you're a disciple, that's when you would call the teacher your Shurfu the teaching father, because that's the relationship. It's not a master and slave relationship. It's a father or mother teaching their child. That's what the idea is of the shifu, to kind of guide your student in life, in their martial arts life, and outside of that, as a father or mother would guide their child. Yeah. So putting different, um, yeah. But that's when you become a disciple. Other than that, you're just, um, your student. I, was thinking, I have this thought of because I, you know, do YouTube and you know I've been you know streaming as a gamer now. Things are changing, podcast, and I wish to show my journey as I'm showing my growth on um, with my martial arts. And I'm um, I used to take it back when I was 17, 18, and now now that I'm 41, I went back to it. So I've been for for a full year. I signed up for a second full year. So I'm really making this like a life experience. But uh, what is your thoughts on me showing this in social media um, um, versus, let's say, you know, if I wear my, whether it's my, my, my student, um, what's, how, what's the right term, um, whether it's a gi or it's a uniform. 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 Oh, you can say uniform. Uh -huh. Uniform. So it's, um, if I'm showing myself, I see people do that a lot with Instagram and they're, you know, showing a lot of their techniques and moves. People are wearing their uniform, some are not. Mm -hmm. Is it maybe is it maybe by their instructor they can't wear it or is it just their preferences to, I mean let's say the instructor says oh you cannot wear this when you're out there showing yourself in social media or wear something else. So okay so for that instance I would say personally for me if I see my students outside walking around wearing our school's uniform and being ridiculous crazy like uh, just walking I'm, I'm just gonna be like okay um, so there's this weird idea that people 
really believe that um, your students really represent you. That's kind of false, only in the idea that as martial arts instructors, like people come to class, what, um, maybe three times a week for an hour? Um, at my school, we do, you can come every day, but it, the classes are two hours long. But that doesn't really have so much bearing on who the person really is. And it doesn't show, so if I have a student that's going around beating people up wearing my school uniform, yes, I have a problem with that. Yeah. But I think that if a teacher tell, sees a student like, oh, well, you can't do a podcast wearing our school uniform, or tell people that you come to our school, then I would revisit wanting to be at that teacher's school. Because I think that, why would I, as a teacher, why would I not want my student that's proud of what I've taught them to show it to everyone? So, I mean, that's what I would, I would personally think that it's like, as a teacher, I'm proud of having the ability to teach other people and this influence that we have to make them be better people, to help them to be better people and, and really see how they are and grow in their life. So I think that I'm all for it. And any teacher that wouldn't be for it, I think you might want to, he might want to revisit his idea on why he's a teacher anyway. Um, tell me about your role that you casted in Mortal Kombat Legends Never Die with Daniel Pacina. So. Yes, I played a character in Mortal Kombat. What's the character Center. name that you played? He's a character in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can't tell uh, me. Okay. Yes, I'm I'm a secret character, um, and I mean it's just like you can't. They don't want us to tell everyone that's gonna be in, not yet in the movie. Yes. In due time. Yes, yes, yes. There is a. There will be. They're working on a trailer right now. So. In the trailer, we'll probably see more of that, like what you're doing, or maybe parts that. You so play. I can tell you guys something about it. Okay. Um, I do play partially uh, J. Jack Hammer. Okay. Yes. Cool. So. Cool. Sounds great. Uh, any other people you can tell us who are in in the film? Well, I can definitely tell you that Johnny Cage is in the film. Awesome. Yes. So is Sub Zero. Awesome. And. That's it. <laughs> blue girl. A blue girl? The blue uniform wearing. Katana. 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 <laughs> of course I know who it is. It's Katana. Yes. Yeah. She's, I can tell you she's in it too. That's very exciting to see where... I think that's something that what we've been waiting for. Um, whether I... You know, we've seen... I've seen all the three films out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did like the first, second one, you know. That was something <clears> else. Um, the third one, the new one that came out, is just... It's like we're not giving enough, or at least the way I feel, and I feel like this one, I, you guys are going to give us what we want, or a little bit more backstory, I'm hoping to see, with, the, you know, Johnny Cage and more characters bringing it back, so mm -hmm. something more realistic for us, from what I'm, you know, we're used to out there in the big um, movie world, but yeah, very exciting. Anything else you can tell us about the film, or just... So, yeah, so, well, I think that I can say that because this isn't part of the production of Mortal Kombat. It's a, a production company that did it, uh, basically a fan film, just a, a higher level um, fan film with the production that um, we wanted to, the idea, I was brought on around the end uh, when they were doing the, the end of the casting, like they had already cast everyone and then they, um, they happened to see me, my TikToks, and they were like, oh my god, well we want him. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so they uh, they put me in. So, but the idea is that they wanted to really show the martial arts and have a good storyline. So have a good storyline along with good martial arts. Cool. Um, yeah. uh, so it's I think last time we spoke around April ish at the moment. So Not all I can yet. say is that they've been sending us like updates and things. So now that it's in post production, um, they kind of send us the little snippets to. Be like, oh, this is how it's going. So I can say that it is going to come out this year, but I don't have the exact date. Okay, so it's definitely still worked on, being worked on. And yes, who knows yes, if you yes, have yes. to reshoot? We never know what's going on. Things just gotta. Well, we definitely work. won't need. Well, I'm not going to say definitely, but like 99% sure that we're oh, not going to have to reshoot anything. Okay. But yeah, they're just. I mean, so one of the things is like doing special effects. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into 
and editing movies and things like that. So it, that's just kind of what takes time. Okay, okay. Um, I won't ask you any more questions unless, you know, I think we're just going to let everyone else uh, marinate on that and they can be excited. We'll get some more information as time goes. Yes. Along yes, the yes, way. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, tell me about your martial arts TV show you are doing. So, actually, yeah, it's called Legendary Masters Council. Um, it's kind of actually inspired by um, a couple different martial kind of like the old uh, Chinese martial arts movies from Shaw Brothers, um, also with um, a hint of from Mortal Kombat, as well as um, there was a show called WMAC Masters. Oh, yeah, so, I, I loved it, then it just disappeared. That's yes. A great show, though, I think. And so it actually it's um it's going to be a TV series that's kind of like for you guys for social media. Um, it started with the idea that um, people said that they wanted to see something kind of like like where they had the not really like the say in what happens, but they wanted to see something that people could really relate to that was kind of like theirs. So. Um, the unique thing about Legendary Masters Council is that we have a few celebrities that are going to be in the show, but um, we're mainly going to cast people from like TikTok. Um, there is there's quite a few of us that I can't say the names who are going to be in the show just because we have to make you guys kind of salivate and just drool on the idea of a martial arts team. But I can tell you a main one. So um, um, a couple of the mains are Daniel Pacina. He's the, um, yeah, from Mortal Kombat, you guys know. Um, myself, also, we have three really good uh, TikTok martial artists, uh, creators. I don't want to say TikTok martial artists, but they're martial artists and they create on TikTok. Uh, one is Coach G underscore Karate. That's, uh, his name is Garrett Lee. He's out in, in Texas. We also have Modern Ninja which Modern Ninja is also, he's a Taekwondo style, Tang Sudo style, I'm sorry. Uh, he's also in Texas. And then his name is DJ Moore. Okay. And then we also have... On TikTok? Yes, okay. on TikTok. His name on TikTok is Modern Ninja. I'll have those appear um, in the description you know, along with um, all your information to your, your TikTok, your Instagram, and all of them too. You just named in the description. Excellent. And then Daniel Amagwana, which is Panda's Karate. So we wanted to, because of like, we, we, we all kind of have a pretty big following on TikTok and through social media, so we, we wanted to give something back. Like we make videos all the time, but people have been looking for like a big collaboration and something that they could be a part of as well. So I had, through doing, being in the entertainment business, I've had some connections, the actual writer of, um, Legends Never Die, um, he's a really good, accomplished, and uh, award-winning writer uh, from the UK. He did the writing for the show. Um, I have an excellent uh, production company working with me that was did the B-roll for Legends Never Die as well. His name is Chris Barcia. Okay. Um, Alan Keane is the writer and uh, with Dark Mind Productions. And uh, so I had the ability to have this kind of come together. So we put our heads together and we got this great cast. And we also did open auditions on uh, TikTok for martial artists. So yeah, we'll have a, it's gonna be crowdfunded. So that's another thing that it's, you guys have helped us do this. So uh, we wanna kind of give back. If you need a, a dummy to throw off of the building or something, I'll be the dummy and you just throw me and I'll just uh that off. <laughs> That's good because I wouldn't throw you, but I do need someone that I can kick off a building. Yeah, I'll just uh, get pad real padded up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And we'll, we'll definitely put tacks and glass. I mean, um, like mattresses on the, <laughs> on the concrete so you won't hurt yourself. Yeah, is, is, there, is there anything else? How did you get into this uh, entertainment business? Any other shows or things going on? Uh, I was cast, actually, um, for the... The role I'm playing a character named BT in a short film called A Helpless Night. Okay. Um, it's a it's directed by Mauricio Donoso, and the the cinematography is done by Dark Minds with uh, 
Dark Minds Productions with Chris Barcia, the same that will be the director for my TV series. But um, how did I get into yes. this? So it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, I've been I've been a performer. I was on the Shaolin Temple's like B team, their performance team that we would travel around and uh, perform in China. Uh, we did. Uh, I've done martial arts uh, competitions since the mid '90s, and um, so I've always kind of been in this idea of entertainment. But I became like. I guess kicked it up a notch with the acting from I had my first experience in 2008 in a film called Loyalty. It was filmed in Chicago. In and Loyalty, the director, I was supposed to be just doing choreography for them, but he had thought, hey, you know what, it's not like it's a martial arts movie and it's going to be a lot easier if you just, we just put you in the movie and you do like the martial arts for it. And, um, and that's how I got I got put into it. Um, he really liked me, so then he did another film. His name is Gene Hicks, um, and he just did a, another film in 2012, not just, but he did another film in 2012 called The Dying Breed, and he was like, hey, you wanna be like a co-star in it? You'll get some speaking lines. And I'm like, uh, sure. I mean, it's a martial arts thing. They actually filmed part of it in my school. And uh, so that's what I kind of did, but because of TikTok, I kind of went away from the whole acting idea because uh, being a martial arts instructor, that's what I felt was like my trade and how I could really like give back and show people what I've learned in the martial arts and how I can help them. But um, because of Daniel Pacina seeing me and my TikTok, believing that I'm a good martial artist, he brought me into the MK realm and everything's just kind of taken off. That's pretty awesome how everything just keeps coming and coming and TikTok is yes. blowing up and I was just looking at it the other day and I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely blowing up. It's pretty good, you know, everything you keep doing will progress to more things and you never know what else along the way, other more amazing movies you'll be creating and so forth. Uh, oh, I hope so. And on that note with Legendary Masters Council, thank you so much. Um, I would like to show you like our first official poster. Awesome. Board. Legendary Masters Council. Yeah. Amazing. <clears throat> so, yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, thank I, you. I, I can't wait to get started on it. We are going to start a Kickstarter um, next month to kind of tell people more about it, and there'll be different tiers they can help donate, but bring this back to life. But uh, they also can have a chance to even be in the show. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let's Legendary Masters Council. I like the way that comes out. J. Jackhammer. That's what we got right here. Yes, it's going to be great, guys. It's, so those of you that are interested in becoming actors, stunt performers, um, that's like, be ready to work hard. So, I mean, people are like, oh, they make so much money, but there's a reason why it's, a, it's an expensive thing, but also it's a hard thing to get into. A lot of training goes in process for all that, so a lot yes. of whether it's training and retraining to just location meets and meetings and all that you guys got to put together when you yes. want to involve more people to be ready for that whenever you guys are, you know, filming and such. And yeah. So. And in case there are kids watching, this is only water. Darn, you already tell them that. <laughs> um, can you give us some advice on? Um, Beginners, martial arts, people who are just starting or into it in the beginning? Of course not. No? No, no, I'm just joking. It, you know, it's been 35 years since I've been a beginner martial arts, but no. Um, something that well, actually that resonates with me is that my shifu says this all the time, man man lai. So man man lai just means little by little. Um, you know, in English we'll say like Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So sometimes there are days where... You have good days, and then you have not so good days of training. But the important thing is that you continue to train. So you may not see like this idea of what you want to be today, but give it time, and uh, and it'll definitely manifest. Yeah, through my progress as I'm, you know, into, you know, martial arts, I'm trying to grow. Mm -hmm. So I know it's going to take a lot of time. So thank yes. you for that. So anything you want to add to that? Um, other than that, just you know, take little by little.
little by little. Okay. That is the one. So all this other stuff, like oh, grasshopper, you must do this. You must focus on this. You must focus on that. No, you just need to focus on going little by little, pace by pace, and okay. it'll happen. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, so you're known as a drunken uh, master of TikTok. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah. So in Shaolin, drunken fist is a style that is prevalent in it. Um, I told you a bit about my experience and how I learned it. But um, I, yeah, it's kind of weird how that happened. Uh, I, I was talking about my Shaolin brother, uh, Fred Wynn. I was talking to him, telling him that he should get on TikTok. And he started going on TikTok, and I was like, well, since at that time I had maybe about 70, 80,000 followers, um, I was like, oh, he did a video on Drunken. He did Drunken Staff. And I was like, oh, well, I'll do edit and do Drunken Fist. So I did it, and it just, like, blew up. Like, I couldn't believe it. So people were just like, oh, my God, that was so cool. Can you do another video? Do another video. So I started. I'm like, man, they really like it. Like, they want me to keep doing these Drunken Fist videos. So people started referencing what uh, MK's Borai Cho uh, they started referencing Rock Lee, I think is the really big one. And I didn't know who any of these guys were. I thought people were like, um, kind of like cursing me, making fun of me. And I'm like, I'm like, Borach, Borach, what if, what if? And they're like, oh, it's MK11. How are you going to be in Mortal Kombat and not know that? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't play games as much. <laughs> don't work. Yes. But, and then Rock Lee is a character from Naruto, which is an anime. And so I didn't know about, so they started tagging me in videos, asking me to do it, and that's kind of what happened. I mean, like, it just blew up, and from that, like, 70, 80,000 followers, I ended up, now I'm at almost 200,000. Amazing. Drunken Fist. So are we going to be able to see some of that in a minute? Uh, sure, why not? All right, sure. Hey Jade. Yeah. I got these slides I just got from a um, martial arts school. Something I'm learning recently. Do you guys study these? Oh. Um. It's kind of nice and heavy. So no, in Shaolin we don't really use these. These are kind of a Japanese Okinawan weapon. But um, the nice thing about doing traditional martial arts is that you learn how to defend yourself with anything. So I may not be able to do it like people would, like that would actually know how to use the weapon. But, um, yeah, we can defend ourselves with pretty much anything. Uh, the weapon that we use in Shaolin, mostly, is the staff. I got a bow staff. What? You do? Uh, yeah, yeah. You want to see it? Yes, 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 yes. Cool. I'll have one, too. I'm going to put these right there. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So, if you notice, because, like, in the Japanese and Korean arts, like, if you notice, like, with your staff, uh, so the bow actually means staff. A lot of people say bow staff, but you only need to say bow, or you can say staff, it's okay. But um, if you notice that it's kind of thin at the top and the bottom and thicker in the center, um, they use this weapon 
for like a lot of close range as well. But uh, in Shaolin, our staffs are kind of like one street size, and they they're flexible. They are made from or cut from what's called wax wood. But you see how it bends. Yes. So there's flexibility. So we can block, use them short and long range. But um, you want me to show you some stuff? I would love to see some. Yeah, you can learn some. Yeah. So. Um, I always like to tell people that in Shaolin also is that you want to be effective, but you kind of want to look cool while you're doing it too, right? And so, um, so we can start off with something simple. Uh, this is called a sideway. It's called Liao Gun. So all you need to do is grab your hand, put it about maybe a, a quarter of the way, so a little bit less than half. Yeah and put your other hand behind it, your back hand, right? And so you're going to hold it, put your right leg forward, hold it like a baseball bat, like this, right? So this is called Liao Gun, which just means to sway or deflect back. So what you're going to do is swing your arm back behind you and swing up. So going like this, yeah. So going up, turning your shoulders. You always want your body to trail your weapon. Good. Hey, that's really good. It's like you've done this before. <laughs> Maybe not exactly this technique, but it's coming in. It's pretty simple. It's a really easy, basic technique you can do. And then you can step forward when you sway forward. Good. Uh-huh. Good. And then spin. <laughs> a little hard for me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, so from here, I want you to remember your body trails the weapon, so it goes like this, and when it goes down, you turn with it, and then you let go with your left hand, stepping forward because your body is trailing the weapon, and then you just hold it. Okay. Yep. So you hold it down. Your wrist is gonna go like you're putting it behind your back, like this. Okay, so I'm bringing it in. Uh-huh. Bring it out, then. Yep. And then just hold it with your right hand now. Your left hand lets go, and then you drop it. So like, your thumb is gonna go down. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, go down. And then goes behind your back like that. Yes. So the reason why that we have different movements that are kind of like that, right? So say I have the staff, and I'm using it long range, and you can come over here and say, let's say this is just movie-like, but I throw the staff and you block up like this. So I, I spun around because I knocked your weapon out of the way and I went here, right? So holding it here, but then you have it, right? I can't hit you. So this hand is free so I can drop down and then I can hit you. Yeah, that, that right? was... So yeah. having, so this is just used as a diversion. Right, so I'm throwing it up, I'm like, here, then I grow it out, and then I can hit you. Right, because your power is for something that is coming in, coming like I'm this not strike, right? You're not expecting, right? So I had my hands on the whim, and then I can palm you, and then do whatever, right? So mm -hmm. it, we do a lot of interchanging using both hands, and then letting hands come off to single hand so that you can switch. Unlike in the Okinawan styles that I guess I always see people doing stuff where they're like doing this and like hitting themselves. We don't do that. So, okay. Yeah, so a little staff action for you. Here we go. Okay. Hope you guys like that. I hope I did my best. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. It looked like you, yeah, you, you caught on really quickly with the Liao Gun and then spinning around. It's just, if you're used to always going like this, it's a little bit different to, to switch your hands and to know which one that you want to do. Now, doing uh, something that we kind of do is, is am, I, am I doing uh -huh. this correctly somehow? Is my head movements? So I think so something I have an issue with. Going towards, like, so kind of like the way that we did Liao Gwen. So technically, the reason why we said that they have techniques like that is from the idea that in old style of fighting, when they would use arrows, they didn't shoot directly. So actually, I think Alexander the Great is the one that kind of started that really big with the whole like shooting forward. Because before, they shot their arrows up. 
was either Alec Kenner or the Mongolians, one of them, I can't really remember. Um, so, but they would always shoot the arrows up, so then they would come down on people so from far away. So you could do movements like this because they were knocking them out of the way. It's not like you would just stand there and let a whole bunch, but you would go fast and you're just trying to move back so that you don't get hit. That having that circular motion is a lot easier to move your staff instead of trying to go like this, trying to not get hit. Um, so that's one of the reasons. Going forward, so the way that we do them is we use our figure eight and we go like this. So the reason for us doing this, because so we have, like, kind of think of it in three sections. So both ends and then the center. And you make it like you cut it in, in thirds. Okay. Right? And so what we do is put your left arm under your right armpit. And so you move this way. Yes. So reason for this is that you have a lot more control. And so if I am, say you and I are fighting, right? and you have your staff. So from here, once again, me going like this makes it easy for me to kind of hold it, right? And then I can control you. So going one, two, and then down here, and having the spin. So if I'm spinning it, it's kind of like, see how it bounces back off of you? So bounce and then I can hit you. Right. And you're growing, no more kids for you. Yes. I don't want well, more kids. Oh, excellent. See, I'd be helping him out. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the way to use. So it's a lot of long and short techniques, but using like this. He, to be honest, I don't know much about like doing it like this. It, to me, it just seems like that's a like a baton type of twirler mm -hmm. type move. It's not really. How like, did you know fighting? No, just, no way so, you were. so we go like this, and then you will put under your armpit and then you scoop like you're scooping ice cream, and then right goes to your left armpit. It's gonna to go to the opposite armpit. Switch, so from here. Oh, that was good. So left is in my right armpit. Okay. And then when I scoop and I open up, now my right goes to my left armpit. We also do double hands down. So uh -huh. No, you're right. Okay. You're right. Yeah, so don't switch your hands around. Stay like this. So this way. Switch your hands. Yeah, so you wanna have palms down. So then like this. Ah. Uh-huh. And then scoop, right goes to the left armpit, left goes to the right armpit, so open up, yep. Okay, so it's going, yep, armpit, armpit, yep, armpit, armpit, nope, armpit. Try it again. Good. Let me show you that one more time. Uh huh, no problem. So it's going here, left to the right armpit, so I got it on scoop. There. scoop, scoop. Right, so now you're open up like this, and then your right goes to your left armpit. Then you scoop. Scoop. Left goes to the right armpit. Right goes to the left armpit. Yep. Right, left. Yep, you got it. And turn your hips. Good. Okay. Excellent, excellent. And then we always go with covering it up. So this is something that's really big in uh, Chinese martial arts is that because if people can see your skill then you're dead, right? So you want it to be secretive. Um, obviously if you're in a fight with someone they already know that you have the weapon, right? But if I have my weapon like this you can't see when I'm coming out with it, right? Instead of me having my weapon just out like this like I'm going to hit you. So always going back when you're in this position because you can use it like to create a diversion so you can get in, hit and kick the person. Or just having back so they don't know. I mean, so we'll have, like there'll be times we'll go here. So notice that because I know that it's across my back, I didn't have to look up and see, and see where my staff is and then I can come down this way, right? So once again, so almost like people use the nunchaku the same way, right? So it's always important to know where your weapon is. So we do different things where we'll switch, but having it behind you makes it a lot harder for the person to see. Okay. It, but one thing that also in return, it also makes you have to do a bigger movement so people can see you. So we work on also our footwork so that we're either close or far away from you so that we have the time that we need, right? 
mushroom. No, too quick for my eyes. I was, did not expect that either. Ah, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> my shifu taught me well. Shishu had Dutch Yeah. Uh, a good question I have for you is, can you show me anything like self-defense for anyone out there who, or people who are training self-defense techniques that you can show us right now or show myself? Okay. So. Self-defense is kind of like one of those weird, like tricky subjects. It always kind of depends on, so self-defense, what is self-defense? So are you talking about like street fighting or are you actually talking about like you're in a self in a Protecting yourself. Like when someone just randomly attacks you. An oncoming intruder. So the thing about like that, I always try to tell people is that, so it's, if we practice a routine of doing something, that's when we're in like this fighting type of, uh, a uh, set, which is a little bit different in self-defense. So, you, like, the self-defense comes from, like, making sure that you're not in that type of situation. Or because I've been training for 35 years of my life, but if I'm walking and someone comes behind me and hits me in the back of my head with a baseball bat, I'm done, right? So, uh, if I'm lucky, maybe they might hit me in the back, and since we practice, like, iron body, maybe I would be, I'd be able to, like, recover enough so that I could kind of get out of the way, get away, but I think what you mean is just like a, a defensive technique if someone comes to attack you, which is that kind of what yeah, you mean? Yeah, let's, so. let's say like you're, you're in front or okay. some, someone just wants to come and maybe throw a blow so, at you, like that. So for me, I really like, I like this idea of giving, letting people be close. Like in Shaolin we have a lot of kicking, but we also are really known for like our hand techniques. And so, like when you punched, I let you come in, and I just move my shoulder. I pull this arm back, because that way it makes me able to hit you. Now, people might think, oh, we don't like that too much. What if your skill isn't good enough? But the nice thing about that is that when you threw your punch, and I was like this, you've already overextended. So you were coming this way. I just helped you, and then I can just hit you, right? So I believe that the biggest thing in defending yourself is that if they can't see you, they can't hit you. Right. So I, my first thing, I'm not going to hit you. Just in case. Don't ever hit a person with glasses <laughs> unless you want a lawsuit because the glasses will break and destroy their eyes. <laughs> no. It's just, yeah. So if you take out someone's eyes, then they can't really see you. No matter what size the person is that you're going against or that you are, if you take out their eyes, a lot of people say, oh, stomp on their foot or kick them in the groin or grab their groin, something like that. In actuality, those are things that can help. But it's not like it's not the end of the fight, um, especially if someone has adrenaline pumping, they're drunk. If you hit them in their groin, they may not even really feel it. Um, so if you hit them in the groin, if you stomp in their foot, yeah, like they may not even feel it because they're numb to it if they're drugged up. Yeah. Um, but one thing is that no matter what they are, if they can't see you, they can't hit you. So any time that I'm doing anything, I think that it's important, like even if someone tries to rush you, that you have your hands protected, like have your face protected, and then you always go for the person's eyes. It might be really scary, but trying to be somewhat calm and breathe in the situation that say like you attack me, and if I'm just like, you come in, like come in, I'm not gonna, and I'm just like, this isn't really good, right? You wanna try to breathe, and then I don't want to just go, ah, he attacks me, then I go for his eyes. No, you kind of want them to put their hands on you. That's another thing that can be really scary. But think about it. If you put your hands on me, I'm not going to do anything. So you've already committed. You're grabbing me, right? So your arms are touching my shoulders. I can hit you in the eyes, hit you in your throat, stomp on your foot. I can do anything because my hands are free. But you, So once you made that commitment to touch me, then it's all the balls in my court now, right? So it may be scary because you, you maybe you're not a fighter or the person was really aggressive. They seem they're a lot stronger than you. But remember that the key thing is you want to defend yourself. But as soon as they've committed, that's a commitment. When they put both of their hands on you, then whenever they're grabbing you, now you're free to do what they're occupied and you can do whatever you want. Okay. Yes. Like, thank you for that. But learn to uh, do constant running so that uh, even if someone attacks you, you can run away. You can run away. Maybe, I guess, um, try to avoid a situation beforehand and if they come at you, then they touch you. Still try to get away. Yeah, it's like, it, I would never tell anyone, no matter who you are, I could be in a fight 
And even me, I don't know who. So for one, because I'm kind of well known, if someone tries to get in a fight with me, they probably either already know about me and they're trying to make up for that. Or they might be crazy, I don't really know. Just because I train in martial arts doesn't mean that I can beat everyone. So the first thing would be is that if I'm in that situation, even I am going, like I said, I'm going to strike at her eyes and then I'm going to try to run away because, I don't know, maybe you'll have a knife. It, it's not a kung fu game, so it's not like, oh, I throw a punch, you throw a punch, and then we block and we go back and forth like that. The idea is that um, I might hit you in your eyes and hit you in your throat and then jack you or something like that just to make sure that I can get away. But the longer that you're in the altercation, the more likely it is that you're going to get hurt. See? Oh. It's really heavy. Yes. Because we train with... Uh, so, I know you guys see modern wushu, and a lot of times, like, people think that they are... It's Shaolin. But we don't really use flexible weapons. How you got stronger is that you use the actual weapon that you're going to wield, right? So... That's, yes. And so my Kung Fu brother and I, like, we gave him the dimension, so we made it a little bit thicker. So it kind of looks like the Da Da or the Guan Da the, um, that everyone sees, like Guan Yu, the guy with the long beard, has. But we made it thinner and then a little bit shorter than the actual saber, the Dan Da. So, yeah. It's weighted at heavier in the top, so it has the ability for chopping and... It also has the circle for helping with catching, maybe in things like your size, right? To twist and oh, yeah, kind of used yes. switching hands as well, stabbing around, up. So the saber in Shaolin is about being, the weapons are all about being agile. So we can go forward, back, up down stabbing around I kind of like underhand because underhand always looks cool and then you switch with your hands so we demonstrate a little bit for us yeah so the horse chopper we usually use it with a shield so uh, let me grab a shield for you good so the shield protects the chin in the knee, so you're usually low. Remember, like I was saying about having your blade, it lines up with your leg, so it's kind of back behind you so that you can't see. So as I come in, brown, up, right? That my shield is here. So the also shield, a lot of times because they were hard, if an arrow came in, then you would chop, you're going up, Round, step, spin, here, step, one person here, there, in. So, switching hands, you don't generally switch hands with when you have the shield, but when we hold the saber, it makes it a little bit harder to see, especially if I'm going straight forward. So that's how we use it. Thank you. No problem, buddy. All right, in closing with this episode, there's something else you want to tell us to finish up? Well, um, just say, make sure that you guys check me out on TikTok, Hammer. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Yeah, sometimes I forget. Uh, as Hammer. I'll have more information on how you can support or be a part of Legendary Masters Council as well as I will be posting updates for the Mortal Kombat Legends Never Die and the new film, A Helpless Night. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But J. Jack Hammer on all of my social media. I'm also going to start posting YouTube videos of tutorials and things like that. Okay, it sounds very good. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. So how do we, do we bow to each other? Or? We just say happy training. Happy training. Master Sword Music TJ the Gamer Yeah, that's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we That's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we That's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, ooh,
be just the corner show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the game is round, oh, yeah, it's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus got one of the best cast that you have ever seen. You really miss it out if you haven't heard that this show here to stay. So go past the word, old school or new school. Check us out on YouTube. It don't matter what you like, we got something for you. Just one more thing to say before I start to close. Shout out to my homies at the Chrono yeah, Show. The yeah. Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the game is round, yeah, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the game is round, yeah, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the game is round, yeah, we. That's the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the game is round, yeah, we. Thunder, 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 thundercats! Hello! <laughs> Eventually, the, uh, the Legends Never Die and the uh, TV series you got coming soon. And then and now, me, is there anything else? Or how did you get into this? Uh, yeah, is, is there is there anything else? How did you get into this entertainment uh, business? Any other shows or things going on? Oh, you see, oh, look, it's just like you just completely ruled that in, like, yeah. No, I can, I can just, actually, I, I, that's the question. Now you're ready to roll. Yes. Okay, excellent. Yes. I was supposed to just do the choreography, and the uh, director was like, man. Just like, oh, okay, no problem. Uh, what in the world? Is it making you cry? <laughs> no, it's all of a sudden, you know. I think it's, I had a uh, freaking eyelash right in my freaking arm. And I, as you were talking, I started to get water. Well, I saw you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the? I can't, I can't continue. Yeah. Or be a part of Legendary Masters Council, as well as I will be posting updates for the Mortal Kombat Legends Never Die and the new film. A, I forgot the name of it. Oh my goodness! No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> A helpless night.